Welcome to Scary Mysteries. I'm Andrew, and thank you so much for tuning in today. As time goes by, more research is done. It seems more and more apparent that perhaps our history books may need to be rewritten. That it's possible there were much older civilizations that were more advanced than they've ever been given credit for. If you really examine the evidence and connect the dots, it makes sense. Today, we're looking at some examples of ancient sites that may prove just that. Here are five strange and mysterious ancient sites you've never heard of. Number five, the Longyu Caves, China. A huge, ancient, cavernous complex with beautiful carvings that you won't even find mentioned in China's history books. The Longyu Caves in China have puzzled experts from all over the world for a few decades now when they were first discovered. It's an underground megastructure, clearly built and designed with sophisticated tools and not even the most advanced archaeological methods could determine which civilization could have had the capacity to carry out such a gargantuan construction project. And on top of that, no one has any idea as to why this underground megastructure would have been built in the first place. In 1992, a group of local farmers in the village of Xi'an Bakun in Zhejiang province attempted to drain several bottomless ponds that were prevalent in the area. For weeks, they pumped out the water with the hope of reaching its deepest part. When they finally managed to get all the water out, it revealed five large, man-made caverns. Each section reaches heights of up to 66 feet. And inside were huge supporting pillars as well as figures and statues carved into solid siltstone. Going deeper underground, they came upon several stone rooms, bridges, gutters, and even pools. The entire surface of this cavern is covered in parallel lines that have been chiseled the effect it creates is a uniform pattern found throughout every single one of the Longyu Caves. News about the discovery broke out and, of course, scientists from all over the world, including architects, engineers, geologists, and archaeologists, headed to check it out. More probes were made with more advanced tools, and this revealed 19 smaller caves. These experts were impressed both with the completeness and the intricacies of the construction, Apparently, all 24 caverns have similar characteristics, such as each one only having one portal to enter. It's been suggested that this elaborate complex was formed by carving rock using nothing only but chisels, with estimates saying that at least a thousand people had worked painstakingly hard day and night for six years to complete just one of the caverns. But really, when you look at it, does that make sense? The only reason it's thought that it may have been created in this way is because supposedly, according to our current historical timeline, those are the only tools that could have existed back then. But could it be that these people, whoever created them, were more advanced than we give them credit for? Since rock can't be carbon dated, the question as to when, why, and for who created the Long Yu Caves remains uncertain. Initially, it was believed that the complex was constructed around 2,000 years ago, which is during the Western Han Dynasty. Surprisingly, though, not a single document from that era had ever made mention of the existence of the cave. As to why they were constructed in the first place, speculations indicate that these caves could be a mausoleum, a quarry, or even a Taoist dwelling. Some even suggest that the rock-carved caves could be built to serve as a secret military base, a palace, or even a ceremonial site. There are many underground structures all around the world. The underground cities of Cappadocia, which could house 50,000 people. Rome's subterranean tunnels, even the pyramids of Egypt are like a huge and solid bunker with tunnels and rooms all throughout. So it's possible that perhaps we were much more advanced 2,000, 5,000, even 10,000 years or more, and that a cataclysmic event wiped out many people and their tools, and we started over again. Perhaps that's why we have underground cities. People knew bad things could happen, and so they prepared to hide and ride it out. And the long you could be an example of just that. 
Number four, Namadal, Micronesia. Smack dab in the middle of the Pacific Ocean between the equator and the 11th parallel line lies the mysterious Micronesian city complex called Nan Madal. Designated as one of the UNESCO World Heritage Sites in 2016, Nan Madal is a megalithic basalt stone structure composed of 100 islets found off the shores of Temwin Island in Micronesia. The beast of a complex stretches approximately one and a half miles. Within its walls are the remains of ancient stone palaces, temples, mortuaries, as well as residential homes interconnected by canals. Because of this, it's gained the moniker, the Venice of the Pacific. Abandoned for many centuries, this place has been taken over by nature, but Nan Madal was once the seed of the Sadler dynasty. The Sadlers themselves were the descendants of two mysterious brothers who founded a religious community on the islands during the 6th and 7th centuries. The dynasty ruled in Madal for over half a millennia, from roughly 1100 to 1600 AD, until a neighboring clan invaded and took the place over. What makes this place so awe-inspiring is that it's an engineering marvel, manifested by the megalithic structures that make up the city. The walls were constructed with huge and extremely heavy basalt logs. Basalt logs are a type of volcanic rock formed from volcanic lava that cooled to form sort of vertical pillars. These sturdy, sedimentary logs were carried or floated by boat from their place of origin in Pon Pei, which is about 25 miles away, all the way to the site where they were stacked horizontally, log cabin style. And considering the average weight of each singular pillar, which is at least 5 tons with some even as much as 25 tons, it's quite amazing how the builders were able to stack up the logs to form walls as high as 50 feet and up to 17 feet thick. Something that if done today would be an engineering marvel in and of itself. Scientists who have studied the ruins couldn't figure out how the people managed to install such humongous stones, let alone hoist them up. Because once again, back then, people didn't have the types of machines, boats, and vehicles that we have today. Specialists thus hypothesized that constructing these megalithic structures demanded enormous effort comparable to that of the pyramids. Moreover, it's also possible that the project had involved at least 25,000 workers and perhaps even more. Then comes the question, was it really the Pompeians who pulled this all together? There are stories that the actual builders had come all the way from Kosre, a territory just south of Pompeia. Apparently, the Kosreans had their own archaeological marvel, which are the huge stone buildings of Lelu. It was believed that these people migrated to Pompeii, where they used their skills and experience to build more impressive structures. However, Radiocarbon dating results confirm that the Nan Madal complex predates that of Lilu by at least 100 years. Perhaps there was another technique that ancient people had in order to build such crazy structures that we find all over the world. Instead of building huge machines and trucks like us, it took another path completely, one that made it effortless to transport and lift such massive stones. Some locals think that the rock may have been transported and installed with the help of ghosts. Madal in the native tongue literally means the city of ghosts. Ghosts may be the best way we can describe it today, but maybe it was actually a technology developed, something where we could levitate huge stones somehow, some way. Number three, Bata Valley, Indonesia. Structures like the Pyramids of Giza, the Great Wall of China, are clear testimonies to the ingenuity capabilities from past civilizations. Oftentimes, written records or oral traditions can serve as reference as to when, how, and why these things were built in the first place. However, when something is so old, those traditions can get lost to time. Right in the heart of Lindu National Park in the district of Poso in Indonesia, lies the enigmatic Bata Valley. 
also known as Napu Valley. This megalithic site features several hundreds of carved granite statues, many of which depict humans, or at the very least, human-like forms. Various local stories tell of how these megaliths came to be. Some of these legends even put names to a few of these structures. For example, there's what the people call the Tokalaea, and it's said that this entity was once a human who raped the women living in nearby villages. The families of the victims then cursed the perpetrator to turn to stone, hence why he's there now. Tadalako is another megalith who was once thought to be a protector of a village. However, difficulties in life forced the man to steal some rice, and his punishment was then that he was turned to stone. These enormities were first discovered in 1908, which is not all that long ago in terms of human history. But since then, they have been researched and studied by countless people. The objective by them was always to find out the story behind these statues, who built them, how they were put up, and what purpose they served. More than 100 years have passed since they were first uncovered from an overgrown field, but it seems like the knowledge we have about these objects remains little to none. No one knows for certain when these megaliths were made. Speculations did, however, suggest that these stones have been carved out from their source about 5,000 years ago. Speaking of which, it's also yet to be determined where they actually were mined from, considering that the materials are not found anywhere on the island. And this meant that they must have been transported, just like in our previous story. As to how, well, we just don't know. It seems impossible, given the fact that according to history, we didn't have much thousands of years ago. And yet, here they are. Meanwhile, the scientific community first theorized that an unknown culture that made megaliths in parts of Southeast Asia could be the ones responsible in putting up such gigantic installations in the Bata Valley. But upon further scrutiny, they concluded that these are very unique in form and style. Therefore, the Bata Valley megalith was created by a different group of people. Currently, anthropological, archaeological, Ethnological and even historical studies cannot offer a solid explanation as to why these effigies were erected. It's a lot of effort to put in, and perhaps they were made simply as a permanent reminder to further generations, people like us now, that amazing things were done and created thousands of years ago. Number 2. Saxe Human, Peru Rising almost two and a half miles above sea level, the great walls of the Saxe Human are one of the most incredible ancient constructions known in the world today. And the reason why they have remained intact for thousands of years is unbelievable. Unlike most ancient sites mentioned in this episode, there are some aspects about the Saxe Human that researchers have understood. For instance, the citadel was initially built by a pre-Inca civilization called Kilike. Centuries later, the Incas came to dominate the area. The dynasty, led by Emperor Pachacuti, opted to establish their capital, Cusco, next to the fortification. But if you look at the sheer size and amazing construction of this place as the individually shaped stones somehow fit perfectly together, you have to marvel at this and wonder how it was made. The stones used to build the walls are massive, with some even measuring 28 feet high and weighing in at almost 200 tons. Experts today do not know how the Kilike people managed to move such large rocks, let alone carry them all the way up the steep hills, let alone place them in such a perfect formation. The reason is because even today, with our technology, we could not create this. This was built and the stones fit together tightly, and it was all done without the use of mortar. If made today, mortar would be used to fill in the cracks and over time would erode and the walls would fall apart. But not this one. As it is apparent, not even the strongest winds or the most destructive earthquakes could dislocate or nudge a single block. In a document written up by the Spanish conquistadors, they described the masonry walls fitted so close together that not even a pin could be inserted between the joints. So seriously, 
How could a primitive civilization lift 200 ton stones and fit them perfectly together? On top of that, according to one researcher, the mysterious zigzag form of the walls actually reveals the builder's ancient knowledge of astronomical alignments of the moon, the sun, and our planet. In a slate of recent studies, archaeologists further discovered almost a dozen enclosures of various sizes inside an Incan temple, just meters away from this wall. As they have yet to be open, many believe that mummies are probably buried there. Clearly, whoever built Sacsayhuaman had advanced knowledge of some kind. It would be amazing if one day we actually figured out exactly how these walls were made. So, keep an open mind. Number one, the Trilithon at Balbac. If you've ever wondered what the largest stones ever quarried in human history were, well, you can find them in Lebanon. Nestled on top of a hill overlooking the lush Becca Valley in Baalbek, a city rich in history and home to the ruins of one of the Roman Empire's largest religious sites. Baalbek is a name derived from that of the Semitic lord of the gods, Baal. But the Romans, who ruled the region for thousands of years, once knew the place by its Greek name, Heliopolis, meaning City of the Sun. At the heart of this complex is the famous Jupiter Baal Temple, and the sanctuary is so colossal it's considered the largest ever built in the Roman world. And at the base of these ruins lies three massive stones, now known as the Trilithon of Baalbek. Raised 23 feet above the ground, these humongous blocks weigh 800 tons each. For comparison, the largest single stone block in the pyramids of Giza weighs just around 90 tons. Construction of the Jupiter Temple is said to have begun roughly 30 years before the birth of Jesus, although scholars seem to agree that the project was primarily carried out by the Romans. And there is some evidence saying that the Trilithon may predate even Alexander the Great who founded Heliopolis in 334 BC. Though the dates may vary, one thing is for sure. These massive stones were once cut in quarries located close to the site. In one of the local quarries, there lies three remarkable unfinished blocks named the Stone of the Pregnant Woman, the Stone of the South, and the Forgotten Stone. The pregnant woman, which is also called the first monolith, weighs a whopping 1,000 tons and measures around 65 feet long. Much shorter, although relatively heavier, is the stone of the south, and this piece weighs 1,200 tons. But the heaviest among the trio is the forgotten stone, which experts estimated to weigh a jaw-dropping 1,700 tons. And this makes it the largest single piece of stone ever hewn out of the earth. These rocks were supposed to join the Trilithon and the Jupiter Temple, but for some unknown reasons were left stranded, and as to why the blocks were never finished and freighted to Baalbek would be another mystery to tackle. Now it's said that with the strength and effort of at least tens of thousands of workers, the blocks were able to be transported and hoisted up to the temple's foothold. But hoisted with what and how? Wood would crumble under the weight of such a massive block and without machines, does it really seem feasible that people would actually raise these things above the ground? With all these stories, there are many unanswered questions as to how these megaliths were constructed. History books tell us that our history is linear. We were cavemen and women, We've learned as we went along and built up knowledge, which means that today we are as advanced as we've ever been. But considering that the structures we have looked at today cannot be created today using our technology, it shows us that possibly the history books have it wrong. And that at some point in time we had different rules and different technology that made all these megaliths possible. So there were five strange and mysterious ancient sites you never heard of. If this topic interests you, you gotta go check out the YouTube channel Bright Insights, which talks a lot about these topics in a very cool way. If you want more from us, consider checking out our Patreon to support the channel and get access to exclusive videos over there, 
that we put out each and every week. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I'll see you soon.